Lewis structures show the connectivity between atoms and they also show all of the um, bonding and non-bonding electrons. So a Lewis structure is going to be, for instance, drawing one that we've already looked at, CH4, was on a previous slide, like that. Now, the molecular formula, something, or a chemical formula, would just be CH4, okay? So this basically tells you the atoms are in it, but it doesn't really tell you anything about how they're connected. Whereas CH4 this way tells you exactly how they are connected to each other um, in terms of where they are spatially, which is going to be important. So we want to um, spend a little bit of time about learning how to draw these, what we refer to as Lewis structures. So in Lewis structures, we need to account for all of the valence electrons. Um, in, in the case of CH4 that we have here, we have to account for all the valence electrons for carbon, and then also all of the valence electrons for the hydrogens. Um, every main group element, except hydrogens, are going to have an octet of electrons around them. Right? And hydrogens are the exception and only have two. So how do we go through and draw a Lewis structure? So I have five steps here. So if we were to look at drawing the Lewis structure for CHCl3, um, the first thing we're going to do is count the total valence electrons in the structure. So to do that, we need, we need to um, look at a periodic table. So if you look at the periodic table, I'm going to list it up here. We're going to have C, H, and Cl are the three elements. If you look at a periodic table, you should be able to see that carbon has four valence electrons. You should see that hydrogen has one valence electron, and you have chlorine that has seven valence electrons. However, we have Cl3 here, so that means we need to multiply that one by three, so that's really going to be 21 from your chlorines. So if we add all of those valence electrons up, we have 21 plus 1 is 22, plus 4, we're going to have 26 valence electrons total. All right, so the next step, step 2, arrange the atoms with a reasonable structure. So how in the world do you know what's reasonable whenever you don't really know what you're doing with this yet? Well, the three bullet points there are your clues. The carbons are always going to go in the middle because, remember, carbons have four bonds. So think of it as like a something with four arms, it's going to go in the middle so it can have an arm coming from the top, bottom, and each side. Hydrogens and halogens go on the periphery or on the outside of the structure, and that's because they can only form one bond. So you cannot ever, you'll never, ever, ever see something like this. So um, let's draw something bad here. Hydrogen with a bond that way and a bond that way. That can't happen, right, because hydrogens cannot form two bonds. So that cannot happen. And instead of writing a hydrogen there, I could have put a chlorine or a fluorine there as well, and the same thing. They can't form two bonds, so they're always going to be on the outside where they only have one bond attached to them. Um, and looking at that uh, previous slide with the common bond, bonding patterns, that can help kind of orient things around. So using what I just said, though, if a carbon goes in the middle, and then we have the hydrogens and the halogens, like our chlorine on the outside, we can set this one up, and I'm going to write over here where I have a little bit of room, carbon with four bonds, and then surrounding it, I need to put a hydrogen, and then I need to put three chlorines. Okay, so that's going to be kind of the starting point. All right, so now, step three. It says, draw in bonds and lone pairs to ensure all atoms have an octet. Where well, I already put the bonds in, but I need to make sure everything has an octet. So if I count around carbon, it has two electrons in that bond, two more there, so that's four, that's six, and that's eight. So carbon has its octet, that's good. Um, remember, hydrogen doesn't get an octet, it just gets a doublet, so it just has one bond, so that's good. Chlorine has two electrons around it. Each chlorine only has two electrons around it, but it should have eight. So we need to go through and add lone pairs as follows. 
right? So each chlorine is going to have three lone pairs around it. So now if I look at any individual chlorine, I can count eight electrons around it. Two, four, six, eight. All right? So now in this case, everything has the correct um, number of electrons around it. Everything has an octet except hydrogen, which has its doublet. All right, so step three is done. Step four, confirm that the total number of electrons matches what I counted in step one. So coming back here, I should go be able to go through and count 26 electrons in my structure. And if not, I have some problem. So let's count them. I have two, four, six, eight. So in the bonds, I have eight. Now I have to go to my lone pairs. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So it matches. All right, so once it matches, we're done, and we can say that's a good, valid structure. Now, if for some reason the total doesn't match, then you go down to step five. And what that says, if the total doesn't match, you might need a double or a triple bond. In other words, you might need to draw a double bond or a triple bond between two atoms. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that here on the next slide. So these multiple bonds can come up whenever it's not possible to make everything match like we just talked about. Um, also, sometimes it's necessary to make the atoms have those particular bonding patterns that we talked about in that table. So for instance, oxygen always needs two bonds. Well, in CO2, right, oxygen still needs to have two bonds. Well, there's nothing else for the oxygen to bind to. So we're gonna have this double bond between the oxygen and the carbon. So in looking at this one, we would say carbon still has four bonds. Even though it's only attached to two different things, we say it has four bonds. One, two, three, and four. Oxygens have two bonds each, right? One, two, three, four. Um, and then for a triple bond, like down here on the bottom, you can see that's the three bonds in between it. So whenever you're counting electrons for a double or triple bond, you count each individual bond as two electrons. And this is going to help if you ever go through, like we just talked about on the previous slide, where your total doesn't match up. Oftentimes, if you add a double bond, you're going to be able to remove two electrons from your overall count. So if you counted 28 and you needed to have 26, usually that means you just need to erase um, a lone pair and add a double bond somewhere. And usually that's necessary um, to also give things the correct bonding patterns. And I guess one example I could do, I could draw CO2. So this is going to be wrong, but right? If I wanted to give everything a, an octet, I could draw CO2 like that, right? And I would say that oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. Carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. And this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. However, if I were to do the math for CO2, I know carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen has six, and there's two of them. So I should end up with a total of 16 valence electrons. If I come over here to this structure and were to count, I would have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So even though I have a valid structure in terms of everything having an octet, I don't have a valid structure because I don't match my total number of valence electrons that I should have. So the way I fix that is by adding these multiple bonds in here. And basically what I do is every time I add a double bond, I have to go in and erase a lone pair. So I'm going to erase a lone pair on the oxygen and I'll erase a lone pair on the carbon. All right. And then I'm going to have to do that also for the other oxygen where I erase a lone pair there, erase a lone pair there, and then draw another bond in. And then we get to the correct um, structure. And again, the other thing that was wrong with that original one that I had drawn is carbons should never have lone pairs and oxygen should always have two bonds and two lone pairs. And I had them with one bond and three lone pairs. All right, so again, multiple bonds can help um, give you the correct bonding patterns and also make your um, number of electrons add up.
So here are a couple examples. Um, I have two on this slide and two on the next slide. So if you want to go through and um, try a couple of these, then you can watch my explanations and see if you're able to do it right. All right, so step one for here is CHCL2. So first we're going to write down each of the atoms and figure out how many valence electrons they have. So again, using your periodic table, you'll look at carbon and see it's in group four. It has four valence electrons. Hydrogen is in group one, has one valence electron. Chlorine is in group seven, has seven valence electrons. For hydrogen and chlorine, there are two each. So now we have to add them up. And if we do the math there, they add up to 20 total electrons. All right, so once we draw our structure, we have to get to 20. Whoops. Um, how do we know how to arrange these? Well, carbon's going to go in the middle. And then the hydrogens and the halogens, which is what chlorine is, is going to go on the outside. So there's going to be my carbon with its four bonds, hydrogen, hydrogen, chlorine, and chlorine. If you're wondering if it matters where you have the um, hydrogens in relation to the chlorine, um, the answer is no. It doesn't matter at all. So this chlorine could be up top or on the, you have the chlorines on the top and bottom, the hydrogens on the side. It doesn't matter where in those four bonds the chlorines go. And we'll actually talk about that a little bit later this chapter um, in a little bit more detail. So now that we have everything kind of oriented there, we have to make sure everything has its octet. So we're going to draw in the octet for the chlorine as follows. And we don't have to do anything for the hydrogen. And the carbon already has its um, eight electrons around it. Two, four, six, eight. So now the chlorines have two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Whoop. Two, four, six, eight. Um, hydrogens always have two. So now we want to double check to make sure we get to our magic number of 20. And I always count my bonds first. So two, four, six, eight. Then the lone pairs, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 on the bottom, and 20 over there. So that adds up. That structure is good to go. All right, so now for CH5N, again, carbon, four, Hydrogen is going to be one, but we have five of them, so that's going to be a total of five. Nitrogen is going to be five. So we add them up, and that's going to be 14 electrons. So how do we orient these? Well, carbon's going to go in the middle. Now, carbon can only have four bonds, right? One, two, three, four. And I have five hydrogens. So I know I can't put four hydrogens there because that means one of the hydrogens is going to have to be attached to both a carbon and a nitrogen. And remember, carbon or sorry, hydrogens can only have one bond. So that means the nitrogen has to be there. And then two other bonds are going to be attached to that. And all those other bonds are going to be hydrogens. And again, if you can remember that carbons have four bonds and nitrogens have three, Right, this can also help. There are your three bonds with nitrogens and your four bonds with carbon. That can also help you um, figure this out. Now, we've got to make sure everything has an octet. And the one thing that is missing here, we need a lone pair on our nitrogen. Remember, the hydrogens only have two electrons around them, so they have doublets. Uh, the carbon, we're in good shape. Two, four, six, eight. The nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. So now if we add everything up, let's see if we're at 14, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and we are good to go with CH5N. All right, the last two here, H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, H and O, two each, so hydrogen has one electron times two is two. Oxygen has six electrons times two, so 12. So this one also adds up to 14 total electrons. Um, hydrogens have to go on the outside, which by definition means our oxygens are going to want to go in the middle. And I'm going to actually, this is the right way to draw this, so I'm going to finish this one, and I'm going to draw it another way. So if you did this one and came up with another way, um, 
I'll explain another way you may have come up with it kind of incorrectly here in just a minute. Um, the oxygens here, they need to have eight electrons around them. One, two, three, four, and then five, six, and seven, eight. This oxygen needs the same thing, right? And again, remembering our bonding patterns, oxygens always have two bonds and two lone pairs. Both of the oxygens meet that pattern. So now if we were to count the total number of electrons, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. All right, so a wrong way to draw this one. So this is, I've seen this in, um, in class before students trying trying this out. So they would write it out this way, and I'll write it up here at the top of the screen. They did O bonded to H bonded to O bonded to H. All right, now if we go through and count the electrons, first off, Oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it with that lone pair. This oxygen on the bottom has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. So both oxygens have an octet. Both of the hydrogens only have one bond. If we go through and count the total number of electrons, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So it actually matches. So the question is, is why is this one up here wrong? Right? This one up here is going to be wrong. And the reason is, is because of the bonding patterns. This oxygen here has three bonds and one lone pair. Oxygen should always have two bonds and two lone pairs. This oxygen down here has one bond and three lone pairs. And neither of those oxygens have the correct bonding patterns, which is why that one is wrong. So again, you have to be able to follow the rules, but you also have to know those specific bonding patterns for your various atoms based on their group number. All right, HCN, so last one. Hydrogen, one electron. Carbon, four electrons. Nitrogen, five electrons. That adds up to 10 electrons. We know the carbon goes in the middle. It has a hydrogen on one side and a nitrogen on the other side. So the initial thing you might want to do is start putting lone pairs around the carbon. I'll go ahead and do that even though this is going to be wrong. And then you would put lone pairs around the nitrogen to give it an octet. And this is wrong already for two reasons. One, carbons never have lone pairs. No lone pairs for carbon. Nitrogen should always have three bonds and one lone pair. All right, so we have too many lone pair. Now, if we were to go through and count, even though everything here has an octet, except hydrogen and its appropriate doublet, we would have way more than 10 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, whoops, 10, 12, 14. So we have too many. So the way we fix this is we are going to remove the lone pairs from carbon, and we're going to remove two of the lone pairs from nitrogen. And we know that carbon always has to have four bonds and no lone pairs. So the only option here is a triple bond there. And that also works for nitrogen because nitrogen should always have three bonds and a lone pair. Now if we go through and count, we have two, four, six, eight electrons, ten electrons, which matches, and we're good to go. And we've successfully made some Lewis structures.